Racism and Oppression in Canada Throughout history, the Canadian government was not fair with people, particularly those who were of different ethnic backgrounds. In fact, their treatment was so cruel and harsh, that it made those people feel like they were not human at all. This unjust and unethical treatment is what essentially led to the foundation of racism and oppression in Canada. Taking a trip back through time, there are several incidents where such racism and oppression are clearly imposed by the Canadian government. When looking at the First Nations, those who occupied Canada first, it is quite clear that the Indian Act works directly in taking away the rights away from First Nations people. Other governmental policies that followed also prevented Jewish people from entering Canada during the Holocaust of 1933 to 1945. But above all, the leading effect of racism occurred during the anti-Asiatic riot, which ultimately segregated people of color and promoted white supremacy. The development of Canada was based largely on oppression and racist policies which gave power to a few and marginalized many, the effects of which are still felt today. In 1876, the Canadian government created the Indian Act, which was mainly about suppressing the Aboriginal culture in Canada. One by one, the government slowly took away the First Nations' rights, and even putting an end to those who rebelled. In essence, this was the start to white supremacy as the Canadian government followed through these procedures to maintain control. In other words, they felt that the Aboriginal culture and traditions are foolish, abnormal and the only way to civilize these savages was through assimilation. However, this unjust treatment and abuse is quite similar to what's happening now. On December 11, 2012, Teresa Spence, chief of the Ottawa Piscate First Nation, commenced a hunger strike due to the governmental abuses of the First Nations. And while very few actions have been taken by the Canadian government, we see that the First Nations were not the only ones affected by this. In 1939, Canada was shown as a racist country to the Jewish people. During this year, on May 13, a ship named SS St. Louis was going to take sail to Canada. Some of the 930 Jewish survivors decided to take this ship, fleeing from racial execution. Unfortunately, most Canadians were anti-Semitic, which meant they despised people of different races. Those Canadians were thinking, If Germany didn't want them, why should we? They thought Jews could cause more trouble by stealing their money and jobs. As soon as the Jewish refugees arrived on Canadian soil, they were immediately transported back to Europe. It was a decision that resulted in total fatality. By the time the refugees went back, about 75% of those refugees on that ship were executed by the Nazis. Likewise, a similar event occurred about five years ago. Due to the conditions in Sri Lanka, a couple dozen refugees decided to emigrate to have a better life away. Most of them headed to Australia. Unfortunately, during their travel, Australian patrols noticed them coming and demanded they return back. The Australians didn't allow those refugees to settle there because of who they are, just like how the Jewish refugees were denied. If you thought that was revolting, take a look at this. During 1907, there was an anti-Asiatic riot in Vancouver's Chinatown and Japantown. This was yet another evidence of white supremacy where citizens went around destroying Chinese and Japanese people's shops and possessions. All this was due to the result of foreign immigrants arriving in Canada and apparently taking the jobs of the Canadians. Yet, these jobs were not even paid equivalent in the first place, and the government seldomly refused to get involved and actually take action. Nevertheless, with the results leading to mass destruction, only a very few were accused of the suppression towards people of color. Despite the disregarding of the Canadian government, it is clear that this still takes place in the world. For example, in July 15, 2013, there was a huge riot in Los Angeles caused by African Americans. This was all due to the fact that, 
they wanted George Zimmerman to be found guilty for the shooting of African-American Trayvon Martin on February 26, 2012. Zimmerman stated that he shot Trayvon as an act of self-defense. Even after the riot, George Zimmerman was still confirmed as innocent. The African Americans were wrong to cause such a riot, just like the Canadians, in Vancouver. Throughout the years post-Confederation, people of other races are continued to become dominated to with racism and oppression. Likewise, we come to the sense that the development of a nation, does not necessarily mean we have developed with proper ethical values. Canada has treated people of different races differently, and it is still a common issue among our society. Although we may learn from our mistakes, and take the appropriate political action to end this injustice, the essence of racism and oppression is one that will be permanently engraved in Canadian history.